Great, and we are live. Thank you everyone for joining us again. Um, we're doing a special series of podcasts and videocasts for the Dive In Festival, which is a global festival in the insurance market, promoting diversity and inclusion. Um, brilliant, brilliant festival. And today, um, I'm really, really delighted to be joined by Lena Hantas, who is the CEO for Argo Global in Dubai. Uh, Lena, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Actually, I'm very thrilled to be with you. And uh, this is a great platform for me. No, it's great. I mean, we, we, I know we, we spoke a little bit before before uh, we went on air and, and also a few weeks ago as we were you know, discussing the podcast and your story was fascinating, you know, growing up in, in Lebanon and, you know, ending up uh, today as the CEO of an insurance company in Dubai. Um, yeah, we'd love to hear how, how you ended up as the CEO of Argo Global in Dubai. Yeah, actually, it's been a journey for me. Um, as you mentioned, I, I was born in, in Lebanon uh, and I was raised there. Uh, my parents, my mother is a teacher, math teacher, and my father is an engineer. Uh, both of them, they were, uh, they, they are Muslim. Uh, but very secular, and uh, Lebanon, anyway, has a lot of um, religion, and uh, people there are uh, very much exposed to other uh, culture and uh, to uh, too many nationalities. Uh, so uh, I come from a family, uh, uh, I would say, middle class, educated parents, uh, they had all the time uh, um, uh, a lot of aspiration for their kids. Um, I have two sisters uh, and they wanted those three girls to do something in their life. Yeah. Uh, so my parents raised uh, the three of us that there is no difference between a man and a woman and you can do anything a man can do. And then uh, they instill in me this gender equality and uh, a girl is as strong as a boy. Great. And yeah. was, that, was, that, was that a common thing when you were growing up? Like, were, were, you, were your parents doing something that was slightly different from, from the norm then? Uh, yes, actually, my 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 parents uh, send us. They spend a lot of money. I think they spend all their money for on our education, on on the exposure, on the activities uh, we were doing. Uh, so they send us to uh, top schools in Lebanon, uh, and they made sure that we become uh, three linguals. So I speak Arabic, I speak English, and I speak French. And I went to a French Catholic school in Lebanon, and this was uh, supported by the French government, oh, uh, basically. Yeah. And your so your language at home was Arabic, or my language at home is uh, Arabic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And so, so, and did you learn English at school while you were teaching uh, French? Yes, actually, uh, in school, I uh, in the uh, I would say in the primary school and middle school. Uh, it's more French and Arabic, uh, but in the last three years at school, started to learn the English. And my mother said, you have to go to the American University. You don't have any choice. <laughs> <laughs> because she wanted us to be also mastering the, the English, uh, English language. Uh, so uh, me and my sisters, all of us, we graduated from the uh, from American universities. I, I graduated from the Lebanese American universities as a university in Beirut uh, in 1996, uh, and then I started a career at the bank. I worked six years at Société Générale. It's a French bank in Lebanon. And uh, what gave me the opportunity to work at French Bank is my uh, multilingual uh, yeah. capacity and skill. Uh, so uh, I stayed in the bank for uh, six years. And then uh, I moved to Dubai uh, with my ex-husband. I had two kids at that time. I had Nazar, five years old, and Sarah, two years old. And then came here to Dubai as a family. 
uh, later on things didn't work between um, me and my husband so i i became a single mother i took care of my kids but i started a career in insurance uh so, so did you move when you moved so when you, when you moved did you you had a job in insurance or you, you no moved i moved then... I moved actually to be with my family and then to figure out what I will do uh, because uh, uh, I, my, my aspiration was to find a job in a bank because this was my, uh, my experience, uh, my career experience was in the bank. But when I came here, I had another door uh, open for me. It was insurance. Uh, I met a friend of a friend and he said, why don't you come and join us? And at that time, I joined AIG, one of the biggest insurance company in the world. Uh, and I started my career with them. I was trained to be a casualty underwriter. I have been given an opportunity uh, to study in the U.S. in New York in their insurance school. I did my underwriting training there. And uh, I was flying to Dubai every, um, every month uh, to, to do on-job training and then go to the U.S. to do the, the, the classes training. And then I was trained to be a casualty underwriter uh, for six years. I worked in AIG for six years as well. And in 2008, uh, when the credit crisis started in the world, uh, I moved, I was pitched by uh, ACE, which is Chubb yeah. now, uh, and I worked for them uh, to build the casualty book for them in the region, in the Middle East, so uh, they announced that a regional casualty manager was my position at that time. I stayed with uh, ACE Chubb for two years, and then Argo called me. And I joined Argo. I was the first employee to join Argo in 2011. So uh, I've been with Argo for 10 years. Uh, I uh, joined Argo uh, in 2011 as a chief underwriting officer. And uh, I started to recruit uh, the team after that. Um, so uh, the team uh, and my and my strategy to recruit and bring colleagues to my team i always wanted to make sure that we have uh, a diverse team uh, in terms of expertise languages um, exposure and i made a strategy on this and uh, i think i i have succeeded amazing because that yeah, I want to. We should explore the the recruitment um, strategy as well. But one one thing I just want to, to ask, actually, if we just go back a little bit, is is how you experience kind of the gender equality as you you know move from Lebanon to Dubai. Um, you obviously studied in the US as well. So did you find kind of major differences across the different countries you've worked and lived in, or or has it been kind of similar? Uh, yeah, actually. <sighs> Yes, when I came to Dubai, I would say the insurance market was not as exposed as now in terms of gender equality. Uh, and I used to be one of the fewest women in the team where I worked. But I, over the years, I see the face of insurance has changed. And we see more women uh, in the field and other fields as well, not not only the insurance, also the, the banking, the government, the schools. Uh, uh, I think this is a big topic in UAE, in Dubai, uh, and uh, it is not anymore a topic of discrimination or it is gender equality. Nobody talk about it now because this is something instilled in, uh, right. uh, and engraved now. Uh, I've been in Dubai for 20 years. It took some time to reach there, uh, but I can see that the face of insurance has changed. The face of uh, career uh, for women has changed as well. Um, yeah, but I, I would say I always had the respect of my male colleague all the time. Uh, I was supported by a lot by male colleague. Uh, I was supported by a lot of mentors in the market, uh, male and 
male mostly and female, and yeah. there are also women empowerment. Uh, Brilliant. Brilliant. So it sounds like it's really evolved quite quickly like, over the last well, 20 years you've been there, which is which yeah. is awesome. And you mentioned mentors. So uh, did you have, or did you mention also your mum was a teacher? Um, did, did you have on, and look for other mentors over your career that, that helped you? Yes, actually, you always in your career have direct mentor. You know that this person is going to be my mentor because the company has said to me, this is going to be your mentor. But there are other mentors that they are uh, inborn. You know, yeah. you, you get the chemistry and you trust and the trust and you go for them and you ask them for their for their opinion. Uh, but my real mentor was my boss at AIG, and I still till now consider him my mentor. He's uh, one of the uh, very well-respected CEOs in, uh, in Dubai. And uh, uh, yes, so a mentor, uh, uh, a leader need a mentor all the time and need a coach. And uh, uh, sometimes your coach will be yourself as well when you look in your mirror or uh, your mentor could be a person you trust. So yeah, yeah. yeah I, I had it's... more than one mentor, but some of them are uh, have made a difference in my life in my career more than others. Yeah. yeah, I think it's it's so important. It's good to have role models, you know. Like when if people are growing up in Dubai, want to be in insurance, and you know they look to you for you know the path you've taken and what you're and what you're doing. I think it's so great to have a. I call it like being the CEO of your career. You know, treat your career like a business. Build a board of directors. You know, so i.e. mentors people in your life that can that can help you have this growth mindset and you know like because a lot of people they, they often wait for the company to provide the training or provide career progression opportunities and sometimes you, well I think now more than ever you need to take ownership of your own career and I, I think you know the, the mentorship and all of those things is, is really great yes exactly I, I would say Recently, I've uh, uh, listened to Sheikh Mohammed, the ruler of Dubai, and in, in him telling the story of his life. And uh, there is something he said that uh, made a difference for me, and I think he's right. Of course, he's the Sheikh of, of Dubai. <laughs> uh, he said that the world will present the opportunity for the people who knows what they want for the person who knows what he wants so the opportunity will come to you if you know what you want if yeah. you are not focused i believe in focus i believe in uh, uh, in having one strategy and follow the strategy and execute it it's not it's not good to have a lot of things to work on many things it's good to be focused and work on one thing and execute it and reach it. And of course, if the goal is smart, you will be, you will be able to achieve yeah. it. Yeah. Did you always have, because you seem pretty clear on where you, where, you know, where you wanted to get to, or where you are now, did you, did you always have that like clarity and purpose? Or was it something that you know people can develop? Because if someone's listening, thinking, oh, okay, I'm not quite sure yet. How, how did you go about doing it? Yeah, see, uh, I think when you are at the age of 17, no one knows what, what they want. But as we mentioned, sometimes you have a role model in your life and you want to follow it or you are inspired by this model. Uh, my family, I was inf uh, inspired by a woman in my family. Uh, I would say my aunt and my mother made a lot of difference in my life. Uh, because all of them were educated, all of them, uh, they had uh, a status uh, in their jobs and in their career. And I always wanted to make my mother proud of me, <laughs> of myself. Yeah. So I, I wanted to, to do something. Uh, I didn't know what is it because I was young at the age of 17. You don't know exactly what you want, but I had this something here in my um, inner light yeah, in my yeah. heart, <laughs> yeah, uh, that is telling me that I will achieve, I will achieve something. 
And to be honest, at school, I was one of the good students, but my mother always told me that, see, this something, if you cannot uh, make it happen for you, it's like a rock. You either break it or they will break you. Anything hard that I used to have hard thing, for example, math. If I am challenged with algebra, she tells me, or my mom is a math teacher, she tells me math is like a rock. You either break it or they will break you. <laughs> so I always had to fight. <laughs> hard I love that. To, yeah. So I love that. I love that. My uh, my mum was also a maths teacher, funny enough. Uh -huh. Yeah. But and the hard stuff, I love the hard stuff because I I think it's really good to go through and do difficult things. Because, you know, so often at school, you know, like you do your, you go to school, and if you do well, you maybe go to university and the kind of path is set. And certainly if you're a good student, you know, you just, you do well and suddenly, you know, you go into the real world and the real world is tough. You know, not everything goes your way. It doesn't it doesn't always end nicely like a Disney movie might end nicely. You know, it's hard. There's a lot of it's not fair obstacles in our way. And so I, I love doing difficult stuff, whether it's I, I do a lot of like um, I do long distance running or I go to the gym or I lift weights, which is hard. And it prepares me mentally for what's to come. I think it's important for, for people to do that. Yeah, it is important to have a challenge in life because yeah. this is what keeps you going. So, yeah, I'm, I'm more driven with uh, challenges and I like competition. I like to go into a competition and, uh, and this is where we work. We work in, a, in an environment of competitive edges and competition. Uh, in, in, in insurance and there are other underwriters in the market but we compete with each other and we win, they win, we lose, they lose. So this is this is life. And who said life is easy? Life is not easy. Life is hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. And you have to be up to it strong to, to be able you to be fight. Strong, and you can do things to to to, to give, make yourself more resilient and tougher. And look, you know, people go through different things in their lives and you know, um, a lot of people struggle with their mental health and things like that. And I, and I think for, for me, it's just it's just great to go back to my my earlier point of you know build a really good support structure around you know make sure you have people that you can rely upon who are mentors you know do like difficult things to prepare yourself for whatever life and work whatever throws at you. Um, I think it's really important. I love that. My 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 next question was going to be how your life experiences have influenced your leadership and. It sounds like, I mean, you've, you've kind of gone through a lot of a lot of your what you believe already, but I think it's really fascinating. Is that the stuff you've described? Is that how you that how, how you now like go about leading? Uh, yes, I think it is uh, my 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 education and uh, the way I was raised and uh, uh, the way I was uh, pushed and motivated into life has influenced my my leadership and uh, but the most important thing that influenced my leadership is my exposure uh, with international i my i worked with international companies with multinational uh, individuals i had uh, local mentors i had uh, international mentors and international colleagues all of this will uh, add and add to my experience and the way I want uh, uh, to go forward and uh, the curve of my uh, learning. Uh, every day, every day I, I had in my life was a curve for learning. And I always told my, my children, uh, if you stop learning, you stop grow. Yeah. And Growing is not growing just by age. It is growing um, by being more wise, uh, more having this intu intuition uh, yeah. that things gonna happen. A vision, your vision. You get your vision because of your experience, and you know you know the scenarios in life. That's why uh, you you have a vision and uh, you put it and you execute on your vision. Yes. Uh, so all of this. Uh, helped, yes. 
uh, but I always had this um, uh, strong uh, uh, drive uh, for uh, the diversity, for gender and gender equality and the workplace. Uh, I didn't want uh, only to see this happening. I wanted also to be part of it and drive it. Uh, so, uh, uh, and this is what happened in uh, my little uh, word at Argo, uh, where I encourage my uh, um, my colleagues, uh, male and female, but I stress on female more uh, because I feel like uh, a woman can make a difference uh, in, uh, in uh, the business world as well, because we have this intuition we have uh, uh, different things from a man. We can bring to the workplace uh, other things. We are mom, we are uh, smart, um, and, yeah, and we make a difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, I, think it, I think it's great. It's, you know, having a diverse team, whether it's male, female, you know, different places in the world, different perspectives, it just gives so many more opinions and options and better decision making and things like that and it's also it's great to work in a in a in a, in a team of, uh, of diverse people it's just more it's exactly. more interesting exactly and one other thing in my leadership actually i've uh, i've done here i i made sure as well for all my team to encourage them always to have a life uh, balance, work balance, life work balance, and this yeah. is one of the topics that Dive and Festival is uh, is focusing on this year. Uh, so uh, this is very important for the balance of any human being. In order yes. for you to achieve uh, in the workplace, you have to be happy in your uh, uh, place outside uh, outside the, the office or outside the workplace. So I always encourage everyone to have this balance in life. Uh, exercise, eat healthy, uh, yes. uh, sleep well, uh, go for mindfulness, uh, do some meditation, do some yeah. yoga. So this is something I always encourage my team. I always do. speak about that. I always speak about it. it's so important. You know, treat yourself like a professional athlete. You know, exercise. I have in my diary is the most important meeting of the day. Right. Like I'm just not going to move it. Um, and then the sleep is obviously important, and eating well is 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 key you know having all of that stuff together um it's important absolutely how did you how did you go about building your 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 diverse team i mean there's certain things that you did um to attract people what are some of the things that you you're able to do uh okay that's a good question actually uh in fact i started with myself um i i influence with my myself i will be the role model for everyone so any any i'm the face i'm the face of this little organization here in the middle east uh, and i always going to be the, the role model so when i speak to any colleague i'll share with them my personal experience right. i try to impress them with with whatever i achieved and the thing that i'm proud that I did. Uh, uh, I uh, I do this all the time, and um, I I act as a mentor. And sometimes, if I I need to be a friend, I will do that. I go not only on the uh, on the uh, on the professional side, but also uh, I I try to be uh, as friendly as possible to know if there are any other problem that will affect in the in the workplace. Yes. And I think there are a lot of leaders, and since that the 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 DNI program started, and they started to support and supporting employees and uh, mental health and everything. But I, I think I did more than just uh, the protocols and the programs, uh, because not all the leader can be just uh, a leader and, and a mentor. But also, I, I took this further to be a friend as well. Uh, so this is that. something so I I, I did all the time for my yeah. colleagues. So you're being yeah. being kind, um, caring, 
like just trying to appreciate where people are in their lives and how you can support them. Uh, it's, it's a really and you nice have to be of... genuine about all of this. Yeah. You cannot just say, um, I'm there for you and you are not genuine about your words. Yeah. It's, I think a leader has to be genuine, has to be crystal clear, has to be adamant, uh, uh, correct. Uh, I mean, those are traits and ethics ethical as well about what you do and never lie never say something you cannot do a promises has to be executed yeah. as well yeah yeah definitely interesting and, and also i mean i'd love to hear how how the pandemics affected how you guys are working because in in the uk uh we're at a scenario where i mean i'm just kind of almost looking at lloyds of london now as we speak out the window um, and the streets of fenchet street leadenhall street Right now, we're super quiet. You know, I mean, there's hardly anyone. Um, and there's a lot of talk about how things might go back. You know, some people are doing maybe three days a week. Teams are coming in similar times. But I think we're still arriving there. We're not quite, I don't think we're quite there yet. How, how is it in Dubai? Actually, the pandemic uh, made us as a team get closer to each other. Great. Yeah, uh, it is the so same within. Yeah, it is like the same. We we treat we treat this organization as our little home, and and whatever we did in our our places, we executed here. So uh, we get closer together. Uh, I, for example, in a normal day in the office, I might not be able to speak to everyone. But during the pandemic, uh, at the, especially at the beginning and during the lockdown, we were calling each other every day. We were okay. checking on each other. Uh, we were having more uh, team meeting, not long, a long one, but at least just to check on each other, uh, see if we need anything, any help, any support, whether in, in personal or, or professional. Sometimes it will be IT, for example. So. Yeah. <laughs> just and support so IT. Yeah. So it is like we get more into each other's uh, life uh, and the closer to each other's. Now, after the lockdown, it, uh, it came by, by stages. After the lockdown, we sat together, we said, who wants to come to the office? And I had two of my colleague or three of my colleagues, they wanted to come every day. I said, okay, great. We'll get you there. And I came to the office, made sure that the office environment is, right. is suitable for them to come back. And then uh, me and uh, another colleague, uh, he's my second in command, actually. We used to come every other day. We were not coming every day because I wasn't sure. Uh, I, I wasn't ready to come every day yet. Yeah, so yeah. we were taking turn to make sure that the team in the office are uh, are functioning uh, mentally well. So we we took turn uh, to come here and uh, check on them. And then uh, when summer started to come, we started to think and uh, vaccination started to to be enrolled. We started to think, what shall we do next? Uh, so we were all the time ahead of the curve and ahead of. Uh, at least our London office. Uh, so uh, we met, I met with the team and I said, what do you want to do? And even I went further step uh, with a survey locally to ask them what is their preference. And I had, uh, I had three or four, they wanted to be hybrid. Some other, yeah. they wanted to come every day to the office. One of them, she said, I am, said, I, I, I don't want to come at all to the office. <laughs> so people differed in their, in Everyone's their way. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, so, and so are you going to, are, are you now arrived at the moment, at the point where you're like, everyone's different, everyone has different wants. And, and are you able to cater for that? Or are you going to say? Exactly. We said, let's sit all together and discuss what you, what we should we, we should do in order to make everybody happy. But the same as well, we want to make, to ensure collaboration, training, innovation, uh, to come and see our clients. So as a team, we agreed that uh, uh, we, uh, we, we prepare a workflow, uh, a hybrid one, 
twice a week we uh, we have them and we have the underwriters in the office once a week we have all the team in the office so we can uh, collaborate innovate training whatever and uh, then we decided that when we go back to home and work from our home we do uh, less exposed uh, things with client uh, yeah. things that we we need to do it from home but when we are in uh, in the office uh, to make sure that we have face time and take opportunity of this face time interesting so and this is very much in line with our uh, our mod, uh, mother company in in the uk so and is it aligned, yeah. and is it similar with other companies in your in Dubai? Uh, that, I would that... say we are leader in this. Good. I would say we are leader in this, and people will start following what we are doing. <laughs> right, so, interesting. so your future is hybrid, ultimately, right? Which I think, yes. is, which I think is great. Um, which of course is super different to how it was pre-COVID, right? You must have had everyone in the office, classic. I did too. Um, how have you found it personally? I think it's Amazing. also good to to offer flexibility. Yeah. Uh, so. Whether we work all the time hybrid or we work all the time from the office, it's flexibility that we are trying to uh, uh, to implement here. Yes. Yeah. And how have you found it leading leading a company now that not everyone's in together? Um, you obviously, you know, you, you spoke about it before, you know, you take time to get to know your employees, you're being kind and caring and things like that. Have you had to change the way that, you, that you've led over this past 18 months? Uh, um, I think, yeah, not a change, not a big change, just a tweaking here and there, because uh, if if this is you, your personality, you are going just to uh, to 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 tweak it in order to uh, to be able to match the changes. Yeah, so there is there is definitely a new normal, uh, but also I feel that we are going back to normal. This is the new normal. So we're, yeah. we're in normal. This right is now. the new normal. Yeah, yeah. but uh, it's it's also it, it feels like normal. It's yeah, a new yeah, normal, so but it feels like normal. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. And what do you what do you pref prefer? Like your your working life now? Are you are you in all the time, or are you are you also staying at, working at home a little bit? And like I enjoy the flexibility very much yeah. because uh, it will give me a lot of uh, freedom, uh, and freedom is priceless in some in some cases. Uh, it it gives me freedom to 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 maneuver around and uh, if i if i want to do a late call from uh, from home i can go earlier home and stay there and do it from home uh, if i want to be with my team in the office i will come and see my team if i want to be with my client i will come and see my client if i want to go to lebanon and uh, meet my parents i can still work from a good wi-fi yeah. there this is flexibility. It is really uh, what matters, and this is what uh, the pro the pro side of COVID is yeah, flexibility. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Chinchu, what do you think? How, what do what do you think the effect will be on gender equality? You know, being able to it feels like you know being able to work flexibly will give more people the opportunity to work in companies that previously would have said no, you've got to be in five days a week suddenly maybe someone's saying, well, do you know what? Um, you know, your family situation, maybe you're you know, looking after your kids or you have an elderly relative or whatever it might be. And it's fine if you work at home and do that. What, what, do, you, what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I think it will bring more women to the workplace. Uh, if you have more flexibility, because women not only has the responsibility to go out and do their career but they are also responsible to raise a generation and raise kids and if the generation is good it, the credit goes all for the mothers and the family and the, the, the foundation of this 
so I think it will bring more more women to to the industry or to the workplace uh, and find the work balance that we just talk about it and that I encourage always to do and this is a big topic as well as we said in the dive in yeah. uh, so it it will it will uh, boost the the life work balance definitely. yeah I think also speaking as a dad um, it also gives us more uh, options to be able to take our kids to school if we want to. Um, one of the things I've noticed, I've got, well, I'm almost about to have three daughters, so I've got two and one on the way. Um, and, the, and the really cool thing over COVID was I was able to take them to school. Um, mm -hmm. And if I looked at the people dropping the kids off, pre-COVID it was mostly mums. Um, yeah. And now there's, I mean, it's almost loads of dads and it's a real mix now, which I think is a, a really nice thing. Yes, um, I'm sure you uh, you must have thought at some point, oh, I missed a lot. I, I thought uh, it was, I don't know, the mentality was different, right? It was, I've got to uh, be in, you know, I've got to be in 8.30 yeah. and I've got to be yeah. in. The, and yeah, it would have been. Yeah, like absolutely, like you know, it's fun to drop the kids to school and chat to yeah. the parents and see what they're up to. But then yeah. in your mind, also, it's like, right, I need to make money, support my family, yeah. you know, yeah. be a good role model, things like that. Um, and so I, I would always feel guilty pre COVID if I'd started later. So I dropped my kids off. I, mm -hmm. I would do it occasionally, but I just feel, I don't know, just feel guilty because of the scenario you know everyone's in and yeah um whereas now everyone like dads mums everyone's doing these kind of things now which yeah. is yeah. really good no difference no difference it's equality again and inclusivity again <laughs> yeah exactly you know i want to make yeah. sure my daughters grow up uh, and teach them like your parents uh showed you that they can be whatever they want to be you know yes and i will always remember that dad dropped us to school like like me my my dad used to wake us up in the morning and do our sandwiches and our lunch boxes and wow. used to drop us to uh, to to school and pick us up from school because my mom was a working mom yeah, yeah. so uh, and yeah. we, we will never forget this i always say uh, my dad has has done a lot for me not only by providing uh, the bread to the table uh, but also he he bonded with us he he spent a lot of his time as well with us yeah it's good so it's a team game good. yes yeah, yeah if you see your, your you know parents partners when they're working together yeah. you know doing different things equally it's it's a great exactly. thing so yeah. what a good place to end uh lena thank you so much <laughs> really appreciate you um sharing your experiences and, uh, and views and stuff. It's been really interesting. So. Thank you for having me. Pleasure, pleasure. Speak Thank to you, you soon.